That was beautiful. Thank you, Catherine, Eric, and choir. Thank you. Will you pray with me? Guide us, O oh God, by your Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, in, in your will discover peace. As the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, may we hear with joy what it is you say to us on this day. Amen. So several years ago, I had the privilege to travel with a youth group to uh, Juarez, Mexico. Um, it was a church that I was serving, and the purpose was to go on a mission trip, obviously, and we were to build homes with a more ministry. And if you're not familiar with Amor Ministry, Amor Ministry is, uh, their mission is to keep families together as they partner with churches and businesses worldwide to build a home for families in need. And while the first mission trip to Juarez could never be replicated <coughs> for me, I have to tell you that even the events leading up to our departure were filled with tremendous excitement and anticipation of what was to come. You see, before traveling to Juarez to meet the families, we would spend time learning about their culture and, and what we could expect during our time together. We were told the families um, that we would build homes for uh, were currently living in cardboard boxes, um, some of them with blankets uh, made out of scrap pieces of wood and metal, and one family even lived in a broken down vehicle. Of course, we knew there was a language barrier, and I myself know very little Spanish. And so I was grateful that the youth that were there um, were a little more fluent in Spanish than I was. Yet the one thing that became immediately <coughs> clear on each trip is that there is a common language spoken in every language, that all people have the power to communicate, and that is the language of love and grace, compassion and kindness. See, this truth was apparent at every turn as our work together was filled with surprise, learning, and abundance of a compassion, if you will. It was evident that the Holy Spirit was not only present, but vis visibly at work in, in ways that words could not communicate or even explain. There were so many things that were felt and heard and made visible and experienced by each person about all of the wonderful things that God was doing in our midst. <coughs> not through interpretation of language, but through actions. We not only worked side by side, we broke bread together every day. We worshiped, we sang, we prayed, we laughed, and we genuinely cared for one another. And on every occasion, the language barrier between us seemed to be overcome by the gift of understanding through the power of the Holy Spirit. Each of us somehow knew what the other person was saying in their own language by our love. What happened on each of the mission trips to Juarez is exactly what Pentecost is and tells us that the universal language of God is the ability to share the good news with others through love. Pentecost reminds us of how the Holy Spirit overcomes the barriers affiliated with language and culture to bring people together for good, just as the prophet Joel and Jesus promised. As you heard Pastor Jason mention in Lily, today is Pentecost Sunday. It is also known as the birthday of the church and an important uh, symbol historically associated with Pentecost is the color red. Red is a visual reminder of the tongues of fire that empowered the disciples and others to proclaim the good news of Jesus' Jesus's resurrection to the crowd. You see, Pentecost is celebrated 50 days after Easter. And this is the time for each one of us and others for a new start. It is a time for a new beginning. 
while the story of Pentecost is a marvelous, wonderful story, it is a story that many other Christians find hard to understand. For the disciples on the first Pentecost, it was 50 days after the Passover, when the Holy Spirit breaks onto the scene with the sound of a rushing wind that allowed a diverse group of people the ability to hear and to understand each other despite speaking in different languages. The wind was so intense, it overwhelmed the disciples as they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. But more importantly, a newfound excitement filled their hearts and their lives with unimaginable emotions that that the crowd accused them of being drunk. But we know that they were not drunk. They were experiencing an excitement because God was at work in their lives. You see, the first Pentecost marks the powerful beginning when the Holy Spirit rested on the first community of believers, empowering them to do new things. The young began to have new visions and the old began to dream new dreams. A worldwide movement of power of God's presence began sweeping across the earth. And what a beautiful gift it is, because we are gathered here today. And so as I read the scripture, as you hear the account of of what happened as the Spirit descended on each of God's people, I encourage you to place yourself in their midst. Imagine what it would be like, look like, sound like, and feel like for you to witness firsthand such a powerful movement of God's Spirit in your life. And then I want you to celebrate how the Spirit of God is rested on each one of you. Hear now the word of the Lord. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then when they heard one one after another their own mother tongues being spoken, they were blown away. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? They're speaking our language, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tell of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused what's going on here, and others joked, they are drunk on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up and, backed by the other 11, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk, as you have, you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy. Your, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions. Your old men dream dreams. And when the Spirit comes, or when the time comes, I'll pour out my Spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. I set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red. Before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous, all who call, whoever calls out for help to me, God will be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. 
So what a gift it is to be celebrating Pentecost. It is also a tremendous joy to celebrate six of our young people who made the decision to be confirmed in the faith today. You know, they have learned so much this last week, or this last year, this last week. 31 weeks, 31 weeks of spending time together and growing um, their faith and understanding so much. Um, they learned a lot from these amazing teachers, too. And now what they get to do is they get to take all of that information that they have been taught, and they get to make it their own. You see, just like the disciples finally understood what Jesus had taught them, now being empowered by the Holy Spirit, they were called to step out in faith, to take what they had learned, and to speak to the crowd and make bold statements. You see, the disciples could no longer stand behind their teacher, looking for answers from him, or wondering about next steps they were now the messengers for Jesus' ministry and mission here on earth. And these six young people who just stood before you this morning are no different in many ways. They are, they are now equipped to do the same thing. Some of them were baptized when they were too young to make the decision for themselves. And as United Methodists, we believe that baptism is a symbol of God's grace already at work within each one of us. And when they went through the baptismal waters, parents and the congregation all participated in the baptismal sacrament taking vows on their behalf in anticipation of them standing before you to profess their faith today. And that is really to confirm what they already know and what they believe about God and God's love for them. Ultimately deciding for themselves that, yes, I do want to be in relationship with God. Now, if any of you went through confirmation or another program similar to that in a different denomination, then you know that the journey does not stop here for the confirmation students. And while the work of the young people to get through all of these 31 weeks of, of classes, it really wasn't done on their own. And it, 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 was, it wasn't the work of just the church, the parents, or the teachers. And although every single person that came in contact with these kids over the course of the last 30 weeks played a critical part, putting a lot of love and energy into teaching and chaperoning and guiding them along the way, their decision to be confirmed today is ultimately the work of the Spirit of God in their lives. Each one of them will continue to learn and grow and, and still be guided by many of you in this congregation and other faith leaders. But ultimately, today marks the beginning of their own personal faith journey. It is now up to them to think and to let think as they develop their personal theology as the church's newest disciples. Being confirmed is just one step in their faith journey. I think a lot of what they learned over the course of the year was new for some of them. And now going forward, the journey of faith-seeking understanding is theirs. No one else can be faithful on their behalf. Their relationship with God is their relationship. Just like no one else can be faithful on your behalf, because each one of you were guided and inspired by the Spirit of God in a, in a way that helped you to get to where you are in your faith journey today. And this is a powerful reminder of how God's movement and God's presence is still everywhere. God has not disappeared. God continues to speak and inspire and call you as his people to have new visions and dream new dreams. 
and today demonstrates how the message of Pentecost is still a relevant message for the church today. While the events that took place on that first Pentecost Sunday might be difficult to understand, the disciples became the church on that day. When I traveled to Juarez with the youth and other adults, and when we gathered with the family in Juarez, we became the church. The confirmands, the youth, and all of you that are gathered here today are the church, the body of Christ. You see, the, God gave the world diversity to enrich our human experience and to overcome human differences through the gift of love and understanding, a gift the disciples most likely did not think that they needed. But the Holy Spirit knew otherwise. The Holy Spirit has given us and our newest confirmants the gift of understanding to guide us in love. And it is in our love for God that moves us into action expanding the church for the transformation of the world. And while the church will never, never be perfect because we are imperfect beings, we will continue to be the church because we know the Spirit is still moving and working in our lives. And the one thing that I do know about the people of Prosper United Methodist Church is that you are a church that embraces the universal language that begins with love. You are a people who continue to show kindness and goodness, patience and peace to one another and the surrounding community in so many ways. But there is always more to do. And so I ask, what will you do to continue to be the church you know that God is with you. The only requirement is to move out of God's way. And so as you begin this new week, I want to encourage you to pray that the Holy Spirit would fill not only your personal lives, but fill this community of faith with new wind and give us the ability to speak and love in a way that brings new understanding to the work that is before us. Let us also give thanks and pray for our new confirmants. We are so excited for you and the, the journey that is ahead for you. And for your personal decision to follow Jesus Christ. So as you prayerfully consider how you can continue to create a church marked by the language of love and grace, compassion and kindness, for each of the confirmands, for yourself and for one another, and for all of our children and youth, and for those people who have yet to walk through the door, know that what you do in your actions and your words speaks to who you are as the people of Prosper United Methodist Church. Amen. <laughs>